What is up guys, it's Alex the Magician here, back for another Heroes 3 strategy video. And in this one, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the top five mistakes that beginners make in Heroes 3. And hopefully by me pointing these things out, uh, you guys can pay attention to them a little bit more and maybe avoid making them uh, as often. And uh, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments below. Also, let me know if uh, you think that there's some mistakes that I missed in this video because I'm feeling like there probably are. But, you know, I just decided to share kind of like m the, the most important ones in my opinion. But I'm sure there are probably other ones that you guys can point out that I could include in this video. And maybe I make another video with, you know, five more mistakes that beginners make or something like that. So let me know all of that in the comments below. And also let me know if you guys uh, want to see something in a future video. Uh, if I like the idea, I may very well do it. All right, so let's just get into this. Uh, so, oh, turn. So the first mistake that I'm gonna share with you guys is forgetting your artifacts. I would say this one is very, very notorious, and not only beginners make this, if you guys keep up with my stream, you know that I make this mistake often, and I've even seen top level players make this mistake, and here's why. The problem, it happens when you're trading in the town, right? And this actually, this feature to be able to trade in the town to, you know, uh, just kind of, exchange your army like this it was added in horn of the abyss right so until then this was actually not an issue you had to trade outside of a town right and when you trade outside of a town you see the artifacts right you open the trade screen like this and you see the artifacts and there's almost no chance that you're gonna forget them right but when you trade inside of a town you can just exchange the army without opening the trade screen so like this if your timer is low and you know let's say you have the artifacts here in the town and you're like okay okay i gotta go i gotta go here's my main boom here's my army boom all right let's go let's go and you're not even thinking you're not even thinking about it and then once you get into the fight you're like oh fuck i forgot my artifacts didn't i this mistake can cost you the game because, you know, obviously, if you're doing a fight on maybe like low army, but you're depending on stats, you have some really good artifacts like a speed boost or, you know, good stats uh, like SOJ, Teapot and whatnot, you can lose much more uh, without the artifacts, right? So to avoid this mistake, what I would suggest is, and actually, this is something that I should where I should take my own advice, open the trade screen like this. So whenever you trade in the town, get in the habit of not just doing this, right? Not just exchanging the army, but actually opening the trade screen so that you see where the artifacts are. And in this case, you are not likely to forget them. So that would be my piece of advice for, um, you know, avoiding this mistake is to whenever you trade inside of a town, just open this uh, trade screen. All right, the second mistake that I'm gonna share with you guys is not buying a spell book. This is also <clears throat> one that I've made multiple times. I probably don't make it as often anymore, but there's a couple of things that can mess you up here. So first of all, if you're used to playing um, spellcasting heroes, they start with a spell book most of the time, right? But then you switch to somebody like Shakti. Shakti doesn't start with a spell book, so you may not even remember. You may just kind of forget the fact that he you need to buy a spell book for him. However, here's another thing. So let me um, I'm gonna spend all of my money here. Try to anyway. Right, 2k, it's still too much. Let me take this town okay there we go so 
the other thing, and this is what usually messes me up more so than, uh, you know, just forgetting to buy a spell book, is the fact that when you click on this and you don't have enough gold. Now, I don't read this normally, especially when the timer is low, right? I do not read this. I just kind of assume, I just click OK, and I assume that I bought the spell book. Because, you know, I didn't actually read the fact that to cast spells, your hero must first buy a spell book for 500 gold. Unfortunately, you seem to be a little short in cash at the moment. And I just completely, you know, ignore that fact. I don't even read that. And, you know, then again, I get into a fight, assuming that I did buy a spell book because I clicked it. I remember that I clicked it. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I did not have enough gold. So now the way that you uh, can avoid this is the fact that when you do buy a spell book, just remember that when you can buy a spell book, when you have the 500 gold, it gives you the option to buy it or to not buy it. So this is where you actually buy it, right? But if you don't have enough gold, right? If you don't have enough gold, it just has this check mark. So it doesn't have the option of uh, the check mark or to, you know, the circle with a line across it. So this is kind of how you can tell even without reading the entire thing that you didn't buy a spell book is that if you get this window with only a check mark, then that means you didn't have enough gold. So you have to do it again. So, um, yeah, to me, it still <laughs> may not necessarily help because I'm still kind of on autopilot at that point. And I'm like, all right, you know, I bought the spell book, whatever the check mark, you know, the check mark is the confusing thing. You know, they should add like a big red X or something like that. But the check mark, like whenever it's like, OK, that means I bought it. Right. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I think. But yeah, just uh, try to remember the fact that, you know, there's going to be a check mark and a circle if you, you know, actually have the option to buy it and just a check mark if you cannot buy it. All right, so the next uh, mistake that I'm going to share with you guys is going to be movement, right? So there's actually like many things that you can do in terms of movement that mess you up. But in general, I'm just going to say that this mistake would be not being efficient with your movement. And I'm not going to talk too in depth about this because there's actually a lot of things that go into it. And I would recommend that you guys actually check out a movement guide. There's one that Xenofix did. Uh, somebody else posted one in one of my videos that um, I'm not sure who the creator is, but I'll try to find it and post it uh, in the video description below. But in short, you need to be efficient with your moves. So, for example, just a small example here, picking up resources or picking up gold along the uh, road, right? or even, you know, uh, not along the road. So the instinct usually is to pick something up like this, right? Just to click it. However, when you do that, you spend 141 moves to do it. Now, if you're also moving in that direction, if you're going this way anyway, it is more efficient to move right next to it and pick it up like this. So here's why. If you do it like this, 141 moves and then you move here that's another 50 moves so that's a total of 191 moves right however if you move down here first that's 50 moves and you pick it up like this that's 100 moves so you actually only spent 150 moves so this works if you're already going in that direction right if you're not going in that direction then of course you wouldn't want to do that like let's say i'm going for this pandora box here instead then of course if i go here and then i pick it up and then i go back up i use 200 moves right whereas if i just uh, did this then i would have used 141 right so remember that like if you're going in the direction in that direction anyway then yeah picking it up horizontally and this works off-road as well right so let's say like this you know instead of picking it up diagonally you know this would be 241 moves right and this and this would be 200 moves so again if I'm moving in this direction already it's more efficient to pick it up horizontally like this and you guys might think that this is not a big deal however I can tell you that I've lost many games 
by not having like 100 moves or 50 moves to take the center of town once I get into the desert or to attack my opponent or something like that. So it adds up. In the end, you know, these small things add up. Like Heroes 3 is a game of doing a thousand different small things right. And when you do one thing incorrectly, a second thing, a third thing, a fourth thing, it all adds up and it snow snowballs into a big outcome that can actually cost you the game. So just, uh, you know, check out the movement guides. Uh, try to be more efficient with your movement. And another thing that I kind of want to share here with the movement is... I'm not going to get in too much detail. It has to do with hero chaining. And the reason I'm not going to get into too much detail about that is because hero chaining itself is a complex thing and it's not necessarily a thing that beginners can do easily. So, but it is worth pointing out. So when you do start to learn hero chaining, right? And let's say, you know, you have a hero um, like over here, for example, you have a hero over here, you know, you're planning to take this picket, you're planning to take this cons, and then your main hero is already here, like ready to do the break, right? And you have the chains set up over here, right? And then you discover, you're like, oh, hey, you know, I have a, like a Pandora box over here. And then you decide to actually take that and you end up getting your army stuck over here, right? So sometimes you figure out, and this has happened to me before, I found like another object, you know, I chained the army over here, I found another object and uh, I was just too baited by that object and I ended up taking it and I ended up getting the army stuck there so I had to waste an entire turn. My main was basically doing nothing near the break. This happens. So what I would suggest, and also this even happens without extra objects, Sometimes when you have the chains, they may be a little bit too ambitious and you try to do them and you see that something is not working out possibly or you get that feeling it's like, oh shit, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough moves. Like let's say I was trying to go for this refugee camp and right, this is 1000 moves and let's say I only had 1700 moves. So, you know, maybe with chaining over here and chaining over here and back, I don't have enough moves to do that, right? So whenever you get that whenever you see that you should adjust your chains and maybe skip something this is something that um kind of marks a better player is when you see that something is not working out you abandon your plan it kind of sucks uh you know obviously it's more it's better if you farm everything right everything that you plan to do however it's better to for example you know let's say i don't have enough moves to farm this picket or something like that and my main stack is angels so then I abandon the picket, I still farm the angels, I pick the most important thing to farm and still complete my chains, and then I break, because, you know, I have a bunch of consoles here, so likely angels were going to be my power stack, and cyclopes break, you know, cyclopes were probably going to die against that anyway, uh, you know, if I farmed more of them. So, um, it's, you know, not as bad to skip one picket than to waste an entire turn on your main. So, you know, that's just what I wanted to kind of add as far as the hero chaining goes. Again, I do have guides on hero chaining. You guys can check those out, but there's a lot of things you have to do, right? So it's not necessarily a beginner thing, but this little point I did want to add. So like, if you see that something is not working out, then adjust your plan, adjust your strategy to, you know, avoid losing an entire turn with your main because that is really bad. Like when you do that, and sometimes it happens even to good players, you know, you really don't want to lose an entire turn because that that right there can just lose you the game. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to share, it's kind of kind of a, you know, not necessarily such a big tip, but this happens to me sometimes. I'm not sure if it happens to you guys. I'm actually curious. Let me know in the comments below if this happens to you guys. So when I trade, uh, sometimes I forget the fact that you also need to switch your heroes. So like when I'm chaining like this, right? I forget the fact that I'm still on the hero that I traded with. And sometimes my brain automatically thinks that I've already switched to the other hero and then I move with the wrong hero, right? And then I realize, oh shit, I don't have the army here, right? So 
you know, I'm curious, does this happen to you guys? Because, uh, yeah, this has happened to me before. You know, I trade uh, like to my main or whatever, and then I automatically think that I switch to my main and I move without actually switching to the other hero, right? So, you know, if this does happen to you, yeah, just remember that after you trade, you, of course, still need to switch uh, to the hero that you traded with, right? All right. And uh, the next tip that I'm going to share with you guys <clears throat> is going to be poor manning. So mistakes while poor manning. Now, if you guys don't utilize poor manning at all, I very much recommend that that's what you do. So poor manning is uh, stands for poor man's town portal. What you, if you guys don't know, and the use of it is basically if you need your main hero to do a fight over here, like let's say I'm doing this Pandora box, right? And then afterwards, I don't want him to waste moves. Let's say I wanted him over here to, I don't know, maybe go for this cons because it's closer than from this town, right? So what I want to do is I want to retreat, right? I want to attack, you know, after uh, doing this fight, I want to attack like the beholders or something so that I can retreat so that I can buy him back over here and uh, then, you know, do the cons, so that, uh, that way I save movement, right? When utilized properly, poor manning can be very, very useful and very powerful. However, you gotta make sure that you do it properly. And here's what I mean. So first of all, you gotta make sure that you poor man on something that does not outspeed you, or, you know, uh, if it does outspeed you, you need to have additional one stacks to prevent from dying to morale, right? And it depends on how fast it is. Like if you're fighting something like, if you're trying to poor man on something like Firebirds, don't do it because they're gonna outspeed you and they're gonna close the gap right away. Something like sprites is still possible because they're not gonna close the gap right away without morale, right? There you just gotta, uh, gotta make sure that you protect yourself against morale. So, a couple of cases that I am gonna demonstrate. So first of all, the easiest way or the best way to poor man is if you have tactics, right? So if you have tactics, it's no problem no matter what, right? When you have tactics, you can poor man on anything because you can just retreat during the tactics phase, right? So no problem here at all. Now, if you do not have tactics, you gotta understand what you're facing, right? So let's say that I have Olema here and I want a poor man and all I've got are the imps over here, speed five, right? So if I'm facing the beholders, I got to consider the possibility of an upgraded stack, right? So <clears throat> poor man on something ranged without tactics, you want to at least tie their speed. And you also want to consider the upgraded stack. So in this case, if there is an upgraded stack, they outspeed my imps. They have speed seven. The regular beholders have speed five, so that's fine. We match speed with the imps. So what I would wanna do here is I would wanna bring three imps. That is because if there is an upgraded stack, they kill one of my imps, and in case they morale, they kill a second one. And then my speed five imp will get to go before the unupgraded stack, so then I can surrender or retreat, right? So let's see how this goes. So you see, there's an upgraded stack. They killed one imp. If they morale, they would have killed another imp. So with two imps, I could have still died here. And uh, you know, this way, my uh, third imp would move before the uh, stack that he ties speed with, and I can retreat here. So just keep those things in mind, right? Now, it's the same story if you're poor manning against something that's faster than you, that isn't ranged, but cannot close the gap right away. So like the sprites, they have speed nine, so they outspeed my imps, right? So what I would wanna do here is I would also wanna bring three imps, if I don't have tactics, of course, I would wanna bring three imps and that protects me against double morale, right? So even in case two of the sprites morale, 
which is, you know, there's almost no chance of three of them rallying. It can happen, you know, so if you want to protect against three morales, you know, bring four. But usually I, I have not died a single time, I would say, in doing this many, many times with just three. So usually I go with three and okay, these guys actually waited, which is kind of weird. Um, and here we can just retreat. So in case they all moved and in case two of the morale, they would have killed two of my stacks and then I would have still been able to retreat. So just keep all of those things in mind when you are poor manning because when I, when I first started, I have died to improper poor mans before. So it's very frustrating to lose a game like that, you know, lose your main hero, you, you know, even uh, uh, disregarding the fact that you already have army, probably, you know, if you, you wouldn't have lost that fight normally, but it's just a mistake, right? Okay, and the last uh, mistake that I'm going to share with you guys is going to be underestimating fights. So... I would say this is probably the mo most common for beginners, and it certainly takes time to understand how to do fights properly and how to take them properly. And what you need to win certain fights, this really just takes experience. However, what I would say, you know, you certainly don't want to attack something that you would die against because, you know, you want to give yourself the best possible chance to win, right? And, you know, if you don't even at least make your opponent try, at least make your opponent, you know, kill you rather than dying to neutrals or something like that. And what I would say is only focus on easy fights in the early game. So something that you know that you can kill, like for example, these earth elementals, they're really slow. They are tanky, but with some kiting, uh, and taking retaliation with one stacks, so you can do it. The ogres here, you also, you know, they're not the easiest fights in the world, like not as easy as these imps, for example, but it's doable with proper kiting. Now, if you fight something like these magogs, that one is dangerous, right? Because they're ranged, they have that area of effect attack, and there's a lot of them here. So I would recommend staying away from something like that in the early game. Vampire Lords, 1019, very nasty, no retaliation, plus they have the life drain ability. Stay away from that in the early game. So anything that you're not sure that you can beat, I would stay away from. And things that are tricky, like uh, the Magogs, for example, or the Vampire Lords, right? What I would suggest against those things is you need to have a plan. So if you don't have, like, if you're fighting something that looks dangerous, it probably is. And, you know, if it has nasty abilities, like if it's not something like these crewmates or the gnolls or the dwarves, you know, something like obsidian gargoyles can be okay. You know, the royal griffins can be a little bit nasty, but if there's not too many, you can manage. So if it's not something that you're sure that you can beat, if it's something that you're feeling like, oh, I'm not sure about this fight, this may be kind of dangerous. Well, you should listen to your gut and what you should do is you should try to come up with a plan. If you're going into a fight without a plan, like how are you actually gonna tackle? Like let's say I'm trying to fight these Magogs. How am I actually gonna fight them? Well, okay, let's plan this out. I've got, let's say these Scorpicors, right? Let's say I have my Troglodytes and let's say, you know, I have a little bit of additional meat. Like these, um, Maybe Medusas, maybe the Beholders, right? Let's say uh, maybe I have the Minotaurs on me as well. So not a very not a very big army, right? But with this, I would say it would be doable. Now you got to weigh the risk versus reward, of course. However, in this case, I've got tactics, right? And let's actually let's actually level up our tactics. Earth magic, advanced tactics, there we go. 
Okay, expert tactics. So now, now that we have expert tactics, we can go, okay, so we've got two, uh, our two Scorpicores, right? And Manticores would work in this uh, case too, because they outspeed the Magogs. And, um, you know, upgraded Minotaurs, the uh, in Trogs cannot reach even with tactics in turn one. But what we can do is we can block off as many stacks as possible with our Scorpicores. So I'm going to split them. And I'm also going to split my uh, Minotaurs to block off the rest of them or actually no i'm not going to split the minotaurs we'll do it like this and then hopefully the um magogs that still shoot they will go for like the beholders or the medusa since they're ranged right so you see what I'm saying? I have a game plan, right? I'm not just rushing into this. Oh, fuck. Let me just go into this and see what happens, right? I know what I'm doing. I know how I want to tackle this. I want to block off the shooters utilizing my fast creatures and expert tactics, right? Without that, it would be much worse. So I'm going to demonstrate this to you actually with tactics like this and without tactics. So let's say I'm doing this like that on Shakti and then uh, the second one I'll just try out with like a random hero. So you see even auto combat only loses one Scorpicor and one Troglodyte, which is already pretty acceptable for <clears throat> 70 Magogs. However, I feel like I can probably do even better. And yeah, what I'm going to do here is just block off the stack, try to save the Scorpicors, uh, block off this stack, attack with that stack, Minotaurs attack this stack, and then this stack is hopefully going to shoot the Medusas or the Beholders. I'm okay with that. And I could technically put the Medusas and the Beholders farther away, but in this case, they may shoot the Troglodytes anyway. So, but let's, let's try it out. Oh, paralysis. Well, that's great. Paralysis. That's great. Okay, so there we go. Easy. All right. So you see, it's actually became a lot easier than I even expected. Oh, actually, I lost three trogs, unfortunately, because I thought for some reason this Magog stack was supposed to move. Oh, it was the bottom one. Okay, so that was a mistake. I should have just finished that stack and attacked the other one with the Magogs. That's fine. Losing uh, three trogs, I would say, is better than losing a Scorpicor. But I could have probably even saved those three trogs if I played this a little bit better. But the point is, this fight goes much m much worse if i don't have that game plan if i'm not you know thinking about doing the uh fight on scorpicors and uh you know uh, tactics and having the units that i can actually use to block off the magogs right and i'll show that to you guys so let's say i'm using olema here And let's say I don't even think of any of that. I still bring all of these units, but I'm like, all right, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm just going to go into this, just, just have all of my units. I'm, I'm not thinking about splitting up the Scorpicors and whatnot. So let's just go into it. So you see, two Scorpicors lost, three Minotaurs and 14 Trogs. Much, much worse, right? And even if I play this, I can probably wait. Well, actually, yeah. So, all right, we did bait the attacks on the Medusas and uh, these guys, but this still goes much worse. Because it takes me two turns to close the gap. I do way less damage, right? So, and you really, really don't want to lose... Um, all of this army in this fight like that because for one the pandora box may not be very good and so 
So we did a little bit better than Auto Combat. We saved one Scorpicor and one Minotaur, but I would still say that these are not very acceptable losses in this case, right? Especially if this is all the army that you have. So you see, whenever you're facing something problematic, you need to have some sort of a game plan, like using tactics and blocking off the units, uh, like using some kind of magic, like let's say chain lightning with soul mirror on ranged guards, uh, like trying to use proper kiting and or like blocking off your stacks against something like the vampire lords. So if you don't have that, if you don't have that game plan, don't try it. Don't try those difficult fights. So that would be my piece of advice and you know just focus on the easier fights fights that you're sure you can take fights that you're comfortable with and just try to improve try to improve your skills maybe test it out on your own time you know try to get better at fight taking kiting the setup etc the planning the thought process and eventually you'll be able to do fights like this by knowing what to do to counter the particular units that you're facing all right, guys. Well, that is it for this video. I hope that you guys found this informative. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you think there's any mistakes that I missed that I should have included in this video. And also let me know if you have other ideas for videos you'd like to see me do. So thank you once again for watching. Check out my Twitch stream for more English speaking Heroes 3 content. Link in the description below. And I will see you guys soon. Peace.